In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Archbishop Gregory of the Genuine Orthodox Church of America. And this video is entitled, True Orthodoxy, Where Are You? And this is a video for Orthodox Christians, people who call themselves Orthodox Christians. Those who desire or have a longing to find the truth, to find the church. For all those that are non-Orthodox, I could be very blunt and say, if you are involved in other religions, from Buddhism, Mohammedism, Judaism, New Agers, Protestantism, Latinism, to be very blunt, you're wasting your time. Christ only made one church. Christ is God. And the Orthodox Church is not a man-made church. For those who are Orthodox, there are two fundamental things that you have to accept. The first is Christ only made one church. And if you're an Orthodox Christian, you have already come to the proper conclusion that Christ is God and that you believe in the Holy Trinity. The other fundamental aspect that everybody must understand and believe is that heresy, or in communion with heresy, cuts one off from the church, from Christ. Heresy, which is a wrong belief, or to be in communion with heresy, will cut someone off from Christ. So those two things someone has to understand and accept. Christ only made one church, and heresy cuts one off from Christ. Or in communion with heresy, cuts one off from Christ. So, orthodoxy, where are you? True orthodoxy, where are you? In this, our, our times, 2020, 2020, where people don't have good sight. The Orthodox Church was accepted by a vast amount of people. Russia, the, the countries of the Balkans, the Middle East, and our numbers were in the millions before the year 1965. What happened? <clears throat> in 1965, in December, and if you could believe it, December 7th, 1965, truly a day that will live in infamy, but 1965, the Orthodox Patriarch of Constantinople, whose name is Athenagoras, along with the Pope of Rome, decided that they are going to lift the anathema against each other. 
1965, they embarked on this road of ecumenism. And that caused a great disaster in the Orthodox Church. Because for the first time, at the direction even of this patriarch, who before he did it, instructed the leaders of all the patriarchates and many of the autocephalous churches and autonomous churches that he was going to do this, this departure from the tradition and rules of the church. And they all assented and went, went with him and did not object. In, in essence, he took this book, which is the rudder of the Orthodox Church, and I should read the introduction. This is the book of the canons, where the apostles have said, if you obey these rules, you will have harmony with each other. But if you do not, there will be enmity and strife. Well, Athenagoras took that book and threw it out the window because he united himself with heresy. He prays in the church bareheadedly and commemorates the Pope and instructs all his people and says that he is in communion with the Pope, although they not can celebrate and, and have communion, but they pray and act as if they are two lungs of the same body, which they said. So this started the, the road of ecumenism, which the Orthodox Church at that time, accepted a majority, except for a small, small minority. And that minority were a few, well, the synod of the Russian church abroad. The most respected, I would say, bishops of the Orthodox Church at that time. Everybody was in communion with the Russian Church abroad. The Russian Church abroad objected to this new road of ecumenism. What happened? The leader, Metropolitan Filaret of the Synod of the Russian Church abroad wrote three open letters to the Patriarch explaining how he has betrayed orthodoxy because you cannot be in communion with heretics. They were all disregarded. And so the Russian Church abroad in 1983 issued the famous anathema against ecumenism. The Russian Church abroad broke communion with world orthodoxy. We call world orthodoxy those who are in the ecumenical movement. In the mid-60s, it broke communion with world orthodoxy. Then in 1983, it issued the anathema. The 1983 anathema against ecumenism reads, to those who attack the Church of Christ by teaching that Christ's Church is divided into so-called branches, which differ in doctrine and way of life, or that the church does not exist visibly, but will be formed in the future when all branches or sects or denominations and even religions will be united into one body and who do not distinguish 
the priesthood and mysteries of the church from those of the heretics, but say that the baptism and Eucharist of the heretics is effectual for salvation? Therefore, to those who knowingly have communion with these aforementioned heretics, or who advocate, disseminate, or defend their new heresy of ecumenism under the pretext of brotherly love or supposed unification of separated Christians, anathema. So, the Church issued an anathema against the heresy of ecumenism. And who espouses ecumenism now among the Orthodox? All of world orthodoxy. Some may say we don't like it, but none will break communion with those who are ecumenists. None will denounce it. So the Russian Church ordained bishops for Greece, and they formed the Greek Old Calendar Church, but they eventually fell away by going into communion with those who are ecumenists. So the only ones left were the Russian Church abroad. They ordained bishops in Russia in 1991, 1992, when uh, Soviet communism fell. <clears throat> Those bishops remained faithful. And in 1994, the Russian Church abroad the one bastion for the defense of orthodoxy in the face of the, of the heresy of ecumenism, they even fell in the all-devouring heresy of ecumenism by going into communion with those who are, were practicing ecumenism and other uncanonical acts. But those bishops in Russia, they ordained myself, and the church continued. The church in Russia suffered very much, <clears throat> but those bishops in Russia who were ordained after communism fell, eventually suffered canonical problems. So what I am saying, saying to all of you, if you want to be part of the genuine Orthodox Church that has not deviated, either through heresy, or communion with heresy, or through canonical infractions. The Genuine Orthodox Church of America is the only option. You can search out all of this on our website called trueorthodoxy.org. Thank you for listening, and God bless you in your search for true orthodoxy.